Alright, so I've been getting a lot of comments over the past several months since I've released my first Ruby Cube tutorial video uh, that I'm going a little bit fast, especially when it comes to the third layer, and a lot of people have really quite a bit of trouble for solving the third layer because uh, clearly in my first tutorial I didn't go over every single possibility of what could happen and people sometimes get confused and then the speed is just of the video is just flying by and then they're lost and then it's just a disappointment. So I decided to make this extended version of the third layer. Yeah, so if you're here by accident and you don't actually know how to solve the first two layers of the Rubik's Cube, uh, feel free to head out back to my original tutorial video uh, and come back here when you've done the first two layers. Also, as you can see, this is quite a different cube than the one I used in my original tutorial. This is actually known as a uh, speed cube. It's called a Dayan Guhong. And if you'd like to learn more about this kind of stuff, you can probably just look it up. But anyways, yeah, this is the cube I'll be using for this extended third layer tutorial. Um, also, I apologize if the color you started on wasn't green. Uh, you might get a little bit confused with all the colors, but for this tutorial we're going to be working with green as our top layer and blue as our bottom layer. So let's get started. When you first start out with the third layer of the cube, we're going to want to follow four steps. First we're going to want to make the cross, then we're going to align the cross, place the corners in, and rotate the corners. So those are, those are going to be the four steps we're going to follow, and if you already know that one of those steps is completed on your cube, then feel free to click any of these links throughout the duration of this video. If somehow you complete one of the steps and the other one is already done and you want to skip over, yeah, feel free to click around. But right now we're going to assume that you are starting from scratch and you don't even have the blue cross yet. Alright, so when you first start out building the blue cross, it can have four different looks. It can look like the dot, which is what we're going to be working on now, but it can also look like this L shape right here or it can look like this line, or it can look like the completed cross. But if your cube does not look like this dot, please feel free to click on the video which actually shows what your third layer currently looks like. But assuming you have this dot, you can hold the cube whichever way you want. Uh, as long as your first layer, in my case green, is facing downwards and your third layer is pointing upwards. You can hold the cube with any sort of rotation. Uh, this is the one instance where you can hold it however you want. And you want to perform the following alg algorithm. So you hold the cube, you're looking at it straight like this. You want to turn the front edge clockwise, like this, so that the green line kind of pops up up here on the left. Okay. Then you want to lift up the right side, so you can lift up these two greens. You want to turn the top to the left, like that. You want to bring this right back down, turn the top back so you can reconnect these greens, and then bring that down. And even though we've preserved the bottom layer, as you can see, we've moved on to this L shape. Okay, so now that you've got this L shape, uh, holding the cube actually matters. The, the orientation in which you hold the cube is actually important. So you want to make sure that, again, your first layer is pointing down, and your bottom layer, your third layer, is looking up. And you want to hold it so that one of the legs of the L is pointing towards you, and the other leg of the L is pointing to the right. Okay, so like this, you see? You hold it like this and you hold it like this, so that the green is pointing down, the blue is pointing up, one of the legs is pointing to the right, and the other is pointing towards you, and then you perform the same sort of algorithm that you perform for the dot. You want to turn the front clockwise so that these three greens come up, then you want to lift up the right so that these two greens come up, then you want to turn the top once to the left, you want to bring down the right, you want to return the top layer back so that these three greens are connected again and you want to turn the front back. So essentially what we're doing is we're just turning the front, lifting the right, pushing the top, bringing the right down, bringing the top back and pushing the front down. So essentially we're kind of going one way and then reversing it all just so we maintain uh, our first layer. But this is changing our cross and over each iteration of the algorithm we're actually getting closer and closer to the cross. So now that you've got this line you can hold it either like this or like this, but making sure that the line is actually horizontal. So once you've got it that the line is horizontal and the green is facing down and the blue is facing up, you perform the same algorithm again. So we turn the front so that the greens pop up, we lift up the right so that these greens come up, we turn the top once to the left, we bring the greens down so we bring the right down, we bring back the top so that we can reconnect these three greens and then we bring that down. So now, as you can see, what we're left with is the cross, which looks like this. 
So now that you've got the cross, I would recommend you perform this algorithm again. So front, right, top, bring the right down, bring the top back, and spin the front again so that you get it back to the L shape and practice a little more on rebuilding the cross because it's important to get practice on each of these steps before you actually complete the entire cube otherwise you'll finish it and then you'll forget how you even got there but again front right top bring the right down bring the top back spin the front again now we're at the line we turn the front lift up the right spin the top bring it down bring it back bring the front down and now we're back at the cross so now that you've hopefully done a little bit of practice on building the cross, now we can align the cross. But essentially what the alignment of the cross means is that these two colors are the same, these two colors are the same, these two colors are the same, and these two colors are the same. As you can see, we've got our yellows aligned and our whites aligned, but our red-orange and our orange-red are completely messed up. Now, as soon as you finish the cross, you can definitely get to at least two of the colors being matched up. So in this case, white and yellow. And if you're looking at your cube right now and two of them aren't matched up, you just turn your top once and you just observe. So as you can see, by turning it once, I've messed up all of them. So let's turn it again. Uh, these are messed up, but this is right, this is messed up, and this is right. So at some point while you're turning the top layer, two of the colors will ultimately match up. So in this case, let's go back to our uh, yellow, yellow, white, white configuration. So if this is what your cube looks like and the two colors are on opposite ends, then keep watching this. But if your two colors are at right angles, so you've got, say, the white and the red correct, but your uh, yellow and orange are messed up, then uh, click right here. Okay, so to solve this configuration, you hold it so that one of the correct ones is facing towards you and the other correct one is facing away from you. And you perform this algorithm. You lift up the right, you spin the top twice, you bring down the right, you bring the top back once by spinning it to the right, you lift up the top, you place the green back in, so you turn the top one more time, you place it back in, and then you bring it down. Okay? And by doing that, as you can see, we've gotten to our uh, 90 degree angle correct ones. So our two correct ones, our white and our orange, are now at 90 degree angles to each other, and the other two are incorrect. So when you have the cube in this situation, you want to hold it so that one of the incorrect ones is facing towards you, and the other incorrect one is facing towards the right, okay? And holding it this way, so towards you and to the right, the incorrect ones, you do the same alg algorithm. You lift up the right, you spin the top twice, you bring down the right, you bring the top back to the right, you spin it once to the right to bring it back, that's important, you can't turn it to the left, you have to bring it back to the right, then you lift up the right again, you place it in, you place this piece in, and you bring it down. As you can see, they all appear to be messed up now, but with one spin of the top layer, you can see that all of these are now perfectly aligned. So now we're ready to move on to placing in of the corners. And when you're placing in the corners, I mean not that the corner is perfectly placed in, so this part is blue, this part is yellow, and this part is red. I just mean that its three colors are in between the correct three centers. So in this case, our three colors are blue, white, and red. But this corner is in between blue, yellow, and red, so this corner is placed incorrectly. Over here, you see that our blue, red, yellow is in between blue, red, white, so this is incorrect. Our blue, orange, yellow is in between blue, orange, and white, so this is incorrect. And our blue, orange, white is in between blue, orange, and yellow, so this is also incorrect. If you have one of the corners correct, feel free to click here. And if you have all of the corners correct, uh, feel free to move on to the last step. But if you're like me and all of your corners are placed incorrectly, as long as the blue is facing up and the green is facing down, you can hold the cube whichever way you want. And then what you do is you perform the following algorithm. You lift up the left, you turn the top once to the left, like that, okay? You lift up the right, you bring the top back so as to reconnect these three greens on the left, you bring that down, you bring the top back to reconnect these, and you bring it down. As you can see, we've messed up our cross, but again, with one turn of the top layer, we can return it to yellow, orange, white, and red. But as you can see, now we've actually got one of the corners correct. Its orientation right now doesn't matter. This was just a lucky coincidence. 
but after performing that one algorithm where all the corners were messed up, it's expected to have one of the corners now being correctly. But as you can see, the other ones are still false. So our blue, red, yellow is in between blue, orange, white. Our blue, orange, white is in between blue, orange, yellow. And our blue, orange, yellow is in between blue, red, yellow. So these three corners are still messed up. But now that you've got it so that at least one of the corners is correct, you want to hold that corner on your bottom right-hand side when you perform the algorithm. So you still hold it so that the green's on the bottom, blue is on the top, and this correct corner is going to be on the bottom right-hand side. So holding it like this, you perform the algorithm again. You lift up the left, you turn the top away to the left, you lift up the right, you reconnect these greens by turning the top layer, you bring the left down, you bring the top back to reconnect these, and you bring down the right. And as you can see, we've messed up our cross orientation, but one turn of the top layer, and it's right back to where it used to be. But as you can see, these corners are still all messed up, all three of these anyways. And this is also normal. This means that all we need to do is perform the algorithm one final time. So again, holding it so that your correct corner is on the bottom right, you perform the algorithm. Okay? You lift up the left, you spin the top to the left, you lift up the right, you bring the top back to reconnect these, you bring them down, you bring the top back to reconnect these, and you bring it down. And now one spin, and as you can see, we've reconnected our cross, we've maintained our bottom layer, and all of our corners are now placed correctly. In fact, these two are oriented correctly, and these two, the blue, orange, yellow, and the blue, red, yellow, are correctly placed in between their blue, orange, yellow, and the blue, red, yellow centers. So now, we're going to go to the final step, which is orienting these corners and completing the cube. This is by far the hardest and the longest step, and it's got a lot of different possibilities. And I'm going to try to show you all of the different possibilities, but if I miss any, feel free to leave me a comment or a video response, and I'll be sure to uh, respond to your particular case. In any case, if your cube looks like this, where you've only got two of the corners messed up, click right here. If you have two corners messed up, but they're at different angles to each other, so they're not in a line, they're actually on opposite sides, click right here. If you have three corners messed up, click right here. And if all four corners are messed up, click right here. Okay, so if your cube looks like this, and actually three of your four corners are incorrect, this is, I'm gonna warn you now, uh, probably the worst possible situation for the third layer, but don't worry, I'll, I'll guide you through it. So, the way we want to solve this is we want to hold it, hold the cube, as always, so that the green is facing down and the blue is facing up, and we want to hold the cube so that the correct, the correct corner, the only correct corner of the four, is going to be on our bottom left. And what you're going to do is you're going to perform the following algorithm. It's going to be very similar to uh, the one we did when we aligned the cross, except this time we're going to do it both on the right side and on the left side. So don't change your hold on the cube as you go through this algorithm, okay? We're going to lift up the right, spin the top twice, bring down the right, bring the top back once, this way, lift up the right, place the piece in, and bring it down. Seem familiar? Okay. Now don't change your hold on the cube and do the same thing on the left. So don't rotate the cube, just hold it as you are right now. Now lift up the left, spin the top twice, bring down the left, bring the top back, once, this way, lift up the left, place the piece in, and bring it down. And now, hopefully, you've reached the point where two of your corners are incorrect, and if this isn't the case, then you must have uh, messed up somewhere. So, yeah, but if you did indeed reach the point where your two incorrect corners are on opposite ends of each other, then you're almost there. If the two corners that you have messed up are on opposite sides of the cube, then what you're going to want to do is hold the cube so that one of the incorrect pieces is on your bottom right, and preferably this will be the piece that when you hold it this way, the blue color will be facing towards the right. We're going to perform the following algorithm. We're going to lift up the right, spin the top twice, bring down the right, bring the top back, lift up the right, place the piece in, and bring it down. Now, we lift up the left, spin the top twice, bring the left down, bring the top back, this way, lift up the left, 
place it in and bring it down. So essentially we repeat the same sort of algorithm that we use for aligning the cross. We do it on the right side and on the left side. All right, so assuming you're one of those unfortunate individuals who actually has all four of the corners incorrect, you're gonna find that solving the Rubik's Cube is actually not that difficult. So what you'll notice is that your corners are gonna be essentially in pairs. And you're gonna see that two corners are either gonna have their blue pieces pointing to the right, if you hold a cube like this, or they're gonna have blue pieces pointing towards you and away from you, okay? It could be the case that both sets are actually gonna be facing towards you and away from you, or it could be that both sets will be facing towards the right. In my case, right here, one of the sets is facing to the right, and the other set is facing towards me and away from me. And what you're gonna find is that the algorithm that I'm about to show you will essentially work to rotate these kinds of corners perfectly on the first try. So essentially, if, if you've got this sort of set, then all you're gonna need to do is do the algorithm once, and then these two corners will be completely correct. Uh, but if you have corners that look like this, where it's towards you and away from you, you're gonna have to do it actually twice. The first time, you're gonna get it to this setup, and the second time, you're gonna actually finally solve the entire cube. So no matter what your sort of setup is, you're gonna wanna hold the cube so that one of the incorrect pieces is on the bottom right, and the entire set is gonna be on your right. So in this case, you can either hold it like this, where both of the right-facing blue pieces are to the right, or you can even hold it like this, where one of the pieces is facing towards you and the other piece is facing away from you. Okay? Uh, so, But make sure you don't hold it like this, where one is facing towards you and the other is facing to the right, and they just don't look the same. Hold it so that the two pieces look the same. So I'm going to start with, actually, uh, this side. And you're going to perform the following algorithm. Now, this is a very long one, and you want to make sure you don't uh, change how you hold the cube while you're doing it. So here's what you do. You hold it so that the two incorrect ones are on your right. Now you lift up the right, spin the top twice. This is going to look a little familiar. This is almost the same algorithm as the one for aligning the cross. But anyways, so you lift up the right, you spin the top twice, you bring down the right, you bring the top back once, you lift up the right, you place it in, and you bring it down. So same thing as the one where we were arranging the cross, but in this case, without moving the cube, without turning it, without doing anything, holding it in the same position, we do the same thing on the left. So we lift up the left, we spin the top twice, we bring down the left, we bring the top back, we lift up the left, we place it in, and we bring it down. Now if that was a little bit too fast for you, then uh, that, that's fine. I'm gonna repeat the algorithm several more times, but if you got that then great Okay, so now we're at the place again where all of our cubes are messed up But like I said both of our sets are facing towards the right and towards the right You could also hold the cube like this where one's towards you and one's away and then one's towards you and one's away But like I said each of these would then take two iterations of the algorithm to complete Which is just gonna be a waste of time. So we might as well do this and know that these two corners are going to align themselves on the first try, and these two are going to align themselves on the first try. So from this, uh, what we're going to do is, again, we're going to hold it so that the right-facing blue pieces are going to look to the right, and we're going to lift up the right, spin the top twice, bring down the right, bring the top back once, lift up the right, place the corner in, and bring it down. Now, without changing the cube, without moving the cube, without doing anything, we lift up the left, spin the top twice, bring down the left, bring the top back, lift up the left, place the corner in, and bring it down. And as you can see, like I promised you, these two corners are now completely correct. So, we have to follow the algorithm one last time and solve it for these two corners. So when you have two corners left that are messed up on the cube, they can either look like this, or they can look like this. So uh, your blue pieces are either gonna be facing towards the right or your blue pieces are gonna be facing towards you and away from you. So if this is what your cube looks like and you have only two corners misplaced and the two third layer colors, in my case blue, are facing towards the right, click this link. Otherwise, I'm just gonna bring it back to the position that I had before and show you how to do it if the blue is facing towards you and the blue is facing away from you. Okay, 
So if your cube looks like this and your two messed up corners, um, their colors are facing towards you and away from you, the blue colors, uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hold it so that the two incorrect pieces are on your right side and you're going to want to perform this algorithm. Lift up the right, spin the top twice, bring down the right, bring the top back once, lift up the right, place it in, and bring it down. Without moving the cube, without rotating it, changing, or doing anything with your hold on the cube, you do the same thing on the left. You lift up the left, spin the top twice, bring down the left, bring the top back once, this way, to the left, lift up the left, place the piece in, and bring it down. And as you can see, now we've reached this location where our two colors the two blue colors are now facing towards the right. So we perform the algorithm one more time. We hold the cube so that the two colors, the two incorrect corners are on your right, and we do the same thing. We lift up the right, spin the top twice, bring the right down, spin the top back, lift up the right, place the piece in, and bring it down. Without changing our grip on the cube, we lift up the left, spin the top twice, bring the left down, bring the left back, lift up the left, place the piece in, and bring it down. And now, as you can see, you have hopefully successfully completed solution of the Rubik's Cube. If your cube looks completely messed up, which might happen if um, maybe I was going too fast again, or, or perhaps you missed one of the steps while you were doing it, uh, it's fine. Just go back to my original tutorial, figure out how to solve the first two layers, and if you need to figure out the third layer uh, in this slower, more comprehensible tutorial, then feel free to come back here. But if you are holding a solved Rubik's Cube in your hands, then congratulations. You have just uncovered the mysteries of this magical puzzle. So what to do next? I mean, practice. Uh, try it again. I mean, obviously, if you've only done it once, then it looks cool, but you're not going to be able to repeat it without some practice. But if you feel confident in your cubing abilities, feel free to uh, click on the cube to see some sweet patterns, like this one right here, huh? The flower pattern, you know? Uh, let's see, the checkerboard pattern. You know, stuff like this. So if you're interested in trying to learn some cool patterns too, uh, make sure you click on the cube. But other than that, yeah, get your times up. Leave me some comments about your best times. Uh, show off to your friends both your solving abilities and your pattern making abilities. And that's it. Happy cubing!